On September 27, 1985, a Petroleum Exploration and Production Act was enacted by Parliament under Milton Obote's second presidency, only to give way three months later to President Museveni's government to take on the mantle. Shell BP people came. A few days after we were in the government to meet me in Entebbe, and they said there is oil in the Calbert. So we were about to sign an agreement with the government of the other government which had collapsed. Now we are here to sign with you. Subsequently, due to a lack of sufficient knowledge about the sector, the president made a policy directive to ensure that oil and gas be studied and laws enacted. Dr. Kabagambi Kalisa, Ruben Kashambuzi and Ernest Rubondo were among the commissioned to this task between 1986 and 1995. You directed that we should do three things. One is to train people in oil and gas disciplines. Two, you said that we should carry out petroleum exploration promotion by carrying out work and inviting companies to participate in exploration. Uh, three, you directed that we should monitor, we should monitor the work of oil companies. Actually, those were the three policy directives that you gave on the 10th of February, 1986, on Monday. However, in 1991, arising from that report, Uganda saw the signing of the first production sharing agreement with Petrofina Exploration Uganda, a Belgian petroleum conglomerate. After the discovery of commercial oil in 2006, cabinet approved the National Oil and Gas Policy for Uganda in 2008, which we are currently applying though being reviewed. It includes elements of resource management, revenue management, local content, environmental protection, health and safety, infrastructure development, among others. Uganda is privileged because by the time the oil and gas sector came, a lot of these processes were established and environmental law was in place. Therefore, the environmental aspects of the oil and gas sector or oil and gas work is very well documented, is very well documented. Uh, detailed aspects of noise, aspects of waste are very well detailed in there. So when the companies come here and sign agreements, they sign on following those legislation. Under Article 61 of the Petroleum Exploration and Production Act 3 of 2013, the duration of petroleum exploration license shall remain in force for the period stipulated in the license, but not exceeding two years after the date of the grant of the license and for a subsequent period not exceeding two years where the license is renewed under Section 64, except that the license shall not be renewed more than twice, and for any period to the term of the license under Section 188, Article 3. And if they are ready to go through the rigorous uh, rules and regulations that we as the Petroleum Authority of Uganda ensure that they do, and they are ready to go through that, then they must surely find that it's very, very profitable. On 23rd February 2015, the Public Finance Management Act Amendment was assented to by the President, His Excellency Yoweri Kaguta Museveni, to cater for oil and gas revenue and transactions under a separate petroleum fund away from the National Consolidated Fund to prevent an economic catastrophe known as the Dutch disease. Due to the large volumes of money transacted within the sector, if oil and gas revenues were to pass through the consolidated fund, it's highly likely to cause inflation and also negatively impact on the factors of production where people will leave their lesser paying jobs to join low level professions within the oil and gas sector because they will be well paying. Wadulo Mark Arnold for UBC.